Hi, my name is Edward O'Brien, or Ed, as uh, most people know me by, Ed O'Brien, and I play in a band called Radiohead. If I was an animal, I'd be an otter. Why an otter? I don't know, just like otters. Anytime, Rick. The first musical note in a band was the G chord in the chorus of She Sells Sanctuary on an acoustic. <laughs> oh, yes. If you know that, ching, ching, ching. <laughs> Tom played the ding -a ding -a ding -a ding -a ding -a ding -a ding <laughs> and I didn't play, I just, I just had this acoustic guitar and, and I, I, I was learning and I just went ji ding ding That was it. That was it. <laughs> so that was, I haven't, not much has changed in Radiohead for me. <laughs> but we are like adding, so we'll add a texture. So suddenly like the, that chorus, that part will make it go, it kind of, there's a sort of, I don't know, celestial. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, do you it know just what I mean? opens yeah. up that. Opens yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pedals. Pedals. Lots of and pedals. more pedals. <laughs> Have you ever snogged a fan? Yes. <laughs> or Ed coming over and shouting at me and sort of revealing his nipple and then running away. Again, you know? <laughs> she seems to do some kind of bizarre sort of iron. What is it? <laughs> what are you going to do with it, though? I don't know. I think it's... Uh... No, no, it's What's not, he going to do with it? it? It doesn't blow me. Okay. Okay, bolt it. Oh, so every time. Just if I worked here. <laughs> I just don't know. Ed, do you work here? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, Would you it? like to? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. When was the last time you used your celebrity status? to get something. <coughs> My favorite Radiohead record is In Rainbows. I think everyone was surprised. I mean, I, I think because we didn't make an easy album, we didn't make a Ben's part two, and that was deliberate. And we didn't think that we were making a perverse album or, or, or a different, a difficult album. We just wanted to make an album that was kind of challenged people's preconceptions about what we were like. So that, you know, for instance, on the first or second listen, they get a lot of people like scratching their heads and like, you know, I, I don't necessarily get this, but something gets in there and, and something and it, eventually it works inside and it gets inside you. So um, I think a lot of the time what people have done, particularly record companies, have underestimated what people, they think that people just want to hear pretty pop songs or rock songs straight ahead. And I think people are bored of that, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm never kind of like, it's, it's providing, you know, for a lot of record companies, it's, it's providing music from marketplace, providing music that they think people want to hear, rather than providing music for people that they should be hearing, you know. I, I always think like, as a band, you have a responsibility to, to progress, to evolve. Where is that video? <laughs> I can't talk about that video. I like, I'm in my best memory, and one of my favorite memories is, it's probably a big stadium memory, was that last, the last time we played, uh, we, did, we did that festival outside of Tokyo, just at all Tokyo. It was great. Yeah, and it was just, and we've never played anything like this, and it was, you know, it's very rarely that you can, you can call one of these structures beautiful, but this thing was, it was round, and, and it was just, it was, it was like being in the, it was like being in this big sort of cauldron, this, this black kind of, you know, stew where you cook your stew and it was all these people and we were there and it was just this great sound and this great energy and we sort of we bounded off stage yes i'm sort of and that because that's what it was like wasn't it it was like this thing it's like wearing this <laughs> this funny hat and um oh yeah <laughs> i went to university in manchester and there were only two reasons really to go to for me at the time, the reason I chose it was because of the Smiths and New Order. Everyone was waiting for this new Smiths album. Open it up, it was because it was gatefold, and in the middle you had um, Salford Boys Club, and the four of them standing there, and uh, put on the record. And the opening bars of, of the title track, The Queen Is Dead, and that drummy. <laughs> Wow, wow. So it was the summer of 86, and it was a four track in Philip's bedroom with Malcolm doing the engineering, little Tascam. I remember it because The Queen Instead had just come out, and it was just, and we had, we had a song that sounded like The Smiths. 
yes. It was like, we're doing it. It's called the, called the Fat Girl. It was, a re- it was a really, really lovely lyric that Tom wrote. It was all about the empathy for the fat girl, you know. And, um, and uh, I think we did four or five tracks. And um, yeah, that was the first, they were the first four tracks in, in Philip's bedroom. Really hot, roasting, like June weekend. And um, yeah, they were the first ones. Muchas, muchas gracias, Buenos Aires. Sabemos que hoy es un día importante en Argentina, que marca el aniversario 33 del golpe de Estado Militar. Queremos, queremos dedicar la siguiente canción a todas las víctimas que sufrieron, a los, a los que perdieron a sus seres queridos, a los que fueron encarcelados y torturados y a los que desaparecieron. Esto es How to Disappear. A lot of the old activism seemed to be very male and it was stuck in that kind of, again, struggle fight. And it's different. These, I think what's really interesting now is the, is that activism is taking a far more enlightened form. And, you know, and I think the emergence of, again, for want of a better word I'm trying to find, but that feminine energy, it's like, it's more enlightened. The guys tend to result to, you know, that kind of, you know, again, you look at all the crap that's going on in the world. You know, it's a very basic thing. If you do statistics, it's all young men. It's fucking all men. You know, I mean, you know, I know it's a really obvious thing to say, but, you know, after years of studying politics and so, you look at it, it's usually men, you know, that what's going on, that general who was just blitzed by an American cruise missile or whatever, or a drone, he was a warmongering Iranian general, who's the president, he's a man. I don't want to get too much into it, but I am hopeful because I think actually, again, another bigger picture is the world needs more females it needs more you know it needs more you know and and it has been a patriarchy for thousands of years there's no doubt about it but for me it feels like it's changing and people are waking up to that i personally and i think we all did and whether some of us realized it or not when we started playing together and you can only say this in hindsight Mm. because of your experiences in life and how you get on when we started I had such a strong sense of like, this is it. Really? Like everything went into focus. Life, you know, life was before that, it was a bit confusing, you know, it wasn't great. It was, you know, like a lot of kids then, it was it was a bit crap, you know. And then suddenly I, I had this kind of epiphany, even with, I, I, what happened, what I remember is walking across, I'd just been given an acoustic guitar and I'd just been started to play it. And I walked across um, the gravel in front of the school and I was going to the music school to have uh, to have a jam with, <laughs> yeah, whatever that meant at that stage, with a couple of friends. Um, and Tom comes out and goes, where are you going? So oh, I'm just off to the music school. He said, do you mind if I come along? And I went, no, of course not. And I remember it kind of like this kind of oh this is so, like i felt something very very strong that's great like some kind of epiphany almost like this is it i mean if you look at our albums today that's a mini album very different from there to there to there to there you know so if it's nearer to the edge of the desk then it's the most commercial now someone last night was arguing it was like this that that was that was kind of and then that's like kid a's right back there so this is the least commercial that's the most commercial and they said that pablo honey was the most commercial then the next one was okay computer then iron lung the benz is there you see i i would do my shift i wouldn't necessarily have that back there so far and have like that move that one up to there Benz there you know maybe because i don't like that one that much i pull that back a bit although it had one good it had a, like a hit single that one iron lung I don't know that, I don't really count that because that was all part of that. And that one's up there. And then, you know, that would be my formation, kind of those two nearer there. Maybe pull that one, maybe that should go, I don't know. Yeah. Is this a quality formation? Is that what? Is it a quality formation? No, no, oh no, oh quality. 
Oh, it's all like this, isn't it? <laughs> Play what feels right. Play what feels right, follow your heart, and um, I hope you enjoy your guitar. All right. Don't be scared to daydream, dream it all up in your head. At the same time, on the way up there, it might not go always the way that you think, but you know, you know, surf that, accept that, and, um, and keep learning and keep being open and enjoy it. I mean, because it's just amazing. But you'd be amazed how many times and how many people don't enjoy it as well. So um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a big roller coaster. A song I have on high rotation at the moment is... Oh, crikey! What songs have I got? Uh, songs... Okay, so... It's shocking the way that it's kept here. This should be risen up like on a tennis foot pack with stairs. All right, okay. It's disgusting. People shouldn't be able to walk all over this. Look. <laughs> right, I think we should stop there. Lots of love.